Hello everybody. So this time I will try to use English to conduct the lesson because this video may be put into school official channel. So let's take a look to see whether you accept this video and feel this one is good. So if you don't feel this one is good, so please tell me anytime as you wish. And today I would just like to present an experience just like what you learned two years ago before i will try to use books powerpoint to present because i think that most of you have the book okay have your have your book at home so i think that you can follow the book and read the pages and try to understand what should you learn okay during this suspension holiday and today I would like to bring to a new chapter which is called chapter 7 equations of circle so I will not explain all the sessions in this book because I think that okay we have to seize the time to talk as many as possible to you and I will focus on the main points of all the chapters so I think that the 7.0 way will you can read by yourself so I just skip it and today's this video i would like to bring to you 7.1 that means that you should expect to learn all the things within chapter 7.1 so now you may turn over your book because i would like to say that the powerpoint that i'm showing to you is exactly what you see in the book with some pages but there will be some pages skipped it but don't worry because you can easily see when i go through the powerpoint you can easily see the page number Okay, so you can easily to see the page number. For example, you can see here, you have the page number. So this page number actually refers to your book page number. Okay, so now take a look to 7.1 to see what you have to learn. So you can see chapter 7.1 is talking about the basic concept of the equation of circle. Now, so you have to understand a very important thing that in this chapter, you have to know circle. And not only circle, but we have to focus on the equations of them. That means that when we talk about the equations, you should expect that you should have some x, you have some y, or even you have equal something. Because when we say equation, that should be equal sign. Okay? And also, you have to okay get the concept is that when we talk about equation, we may have to go to the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. That means that we may have to do with something x something y with something coordinate or even you may have to do something you learned from the coordinate plane for example when we talk about slope and also something like that so this is what you need to learn now we go on to see what we have to go so now you can take a look to see on the on the next page page three it brings you a very important thing which is called a standard form of the equation of circle and what is meaning of the standard form of the equation of circle it means that the main idea of what should be a circle like in the xy coordinate plane so before i talk about the standard form of the equation of circle so i may give you some review of what you have also learned before so if you still remember in form 4 you have learned something which is called equation of straight line okay so if you still remember you've learned something which is called equation strict line and the equation strict line is just straightforward that when we have well so when we have when we have a coordinate plane and when we have a strict line in the coordinate plane for example something like this then we will say that this strict line can be represented by an equation for example this one if i have this one have the number two here and when we say this one you have the slope for example i say equals to three then we can say the equation of this one can be represented by y equals to three x plus two okay so because this if you still remember this one is a slope intercept form and you can also rearrange this equation as three x minus y plus two equals zero which is called a general form of the equation strict line. So you have to understand is that within circle in the coordinate plane, we will also have something called general form, as you can see on page two. And do remember that what is the meaning of equation in the coordinate plane? It just actually shows you all the 
points on the line or the curve that represent that is representing in the coordinate plane, which satisfy this equation. What does it mean? For it means that now if I choose any points on this line, for example, this point, this point, this point, so each of the points should have their own coordinates. And we will also say that all the coordinates here should satisfy the relation this. If it is not if they are not satisfied, so we will say that this point should not lie on the line given. Just like for the circle, it's just the same idea. It means that now if I want to represent the circle with an equation, it means that we have to represent all the points, all the points within the circle. And how do we say it is a circle? Because when you have many, many points, many, many points, it just like you have rounding the points like a circle. So we call this a circle. But actually, it's not really like this. Because when we talk about a circle, we will not just only say a round of the points. We will also say that when we talk about a circle, we should have something called radius and center, which you have learned not in form 5 but you may have learned this one in primary school or even in form 1 because when we talk about circle you should have the concept that you should have a point which is called center and around this center you have the line and we will say that if you take any point on the circle we should always have the fixed distance and we will call this fixed radius the radius so it is just like here we will also have this concept but how do we represent this one using using what using the equation in the coordinate plane so we have to use the very important thing and what is the important thing that we have to use this would be the very important concept you learned in form 2 which is called five factor sphere so now i would like to write here five factor sphere so if you still remember okay also always say the five sphere or we say actually it is, should be the distant formula in coordinate plane because if you still remember, distance formula is actually the five sphere in the coordinate plane. So how do we represent it? So actually, you can go back to see the picture again. Now, so you can see in the picture, now I give you that the center of this circle, you will see that this one, you have what? So you can see that this one. Now, you can see that you have, oh, sorry, I should write here, yeah. So you can see this one, is actually centered because it is given to you and you can also see that in between the point G which is center and any point of the circle for example P so you are given a length here so we call it R and this one is the radius so if you know that now if I say this point is XY and the center is called HK then we should always have a relation that satisfy the distance formula or we simply say the fire sphere is that now when we say if we if, if, if we say now if I have this one is the HK oh sorry I should write better so for example HK should be here and then we will have the XY here then in the in the form of the coordinate we will say this one is out then we should always have the distance formula which we can write as square root X minus H all square and then plus Y minus K all square so this one square rooted should be equal to r okay now so this one is actually the distance formula but when we simplify the distance formula then you can see from the book that you will have the form like this which is the form here by taking the square on both sides so you have x minus x all square plus y minus k all square goes to r square then actually this distance formula changed to this way then we will call this one is already the standard form of the circle it means that actually the standard form of the circle just like the distance between what so it should be between between the center and a point on the circle and because the point is arbitrary that means that you can take any point from the circle so we will say that this relation should represent all the points also on the circle so we call this one equation now you can see that the book will also tell you to note that the equation of circle is a quadratic equation so why because you can see you have the power 2 
on both x minus something and y minus something. So you can see this time you have the, you have the quadratic form because you have the square. And also be be aware that this time you should have two unknowns, not only one. Because if you still remember you learned quadratic equations before, you will only just learn one unknown, x. Okay, x is an independent variable and y should be something on the subject. But this time you can see both x and y are not the subject, but you can see both x and y would have squared, would have squared outside if you have the bracket here. And also you can see the part B say the right side of the standard equation of the circle is a number. It's a number just means that here it is a constant. No x or y here. But actually this one is just artificial making because you can always move the terms no matter to the left or right. But in general, when we talk about the standard form, we want to focus on the, the point between the center and the point of the circle is equal to the fixed distance, which is called the radius. So we will say that the right side, we always put a number, which is the radius of the circle. So, I, so let's take a look to see whether you have a problem. So if you have a problem, you may jot it down and then you may ask your subject teacher later on. Now, you can see that the book will show you some, some special example. For example, this one. And also you can see that there is a notice here. But I think that this one you can read by yourself. So I just go to the example directly. So you can see that in the book, example one, you can see that we will actually ask you to write the equation very, very quickly because now I give you the center and the radius. So what you need to do is just you also always keep in mind that now you have learned already the equation of circle by simply x minus x all square plus y minus k all square equals to r square. And here you should remember that center should be given the coordinate h and k. And also we will say that the radius should be equal to r. So what you need to do is that now you have to put all the things inside. For example, you can see this time in the part B, you have the x, which is x coordinate of the center, which is h is 1. So you just fit it here. And then for the negative 2, you should be the k. So you just fit it here. So after you have fixed this one, then for the last one, 4, you should fit with the radius. But do be careful is that here, you have the square on the right hand side. So do remember to write 4 square instead, instead of writing 4. So be very, very careful. So I think this example is also very easy. Now we go on to talk about the other thing that you need to learn. In example two, also this one is easy because even I just give you the center because you can see in this problem, okay, you can just see that this one is the center, but you can easily find the radius because you can easily see that now I give you one more point A in the question. So you can see it between A and G should be the radius. And in order to find the length AG, so you can use any way you learned before. For example, you may use distance formula or simply for this one because it is a vertical line. So for the vertical line, you can just simply using the big y coordinate to subtract the smaller y coordinate to get the radius directly. And then what you need to do is just you have to what? So you have to write the equation as required from the question. For some in standard form, so you just put it here and simplify to zero if necessary. Now, so you can see it's not difficult at all. But what you need to understand is that this is called the standard form of the, of the equation of the circle and based from the distance between the point on the circle and the center of the circle. Now, you may also take a look on example three. So in example three is something different. You can see it for example three, you can see this time I give you the equation and then we ask you the center of the radius of the circle of what? So it is also very easy because what you need to do is just to do the thing reversely. So I just skip the A. But just I would like to focus on talking about the B is that now if you can see there are some artificial number here, which is which should not be there. So what you need to do is that you have to try to cancel them. For example, you may just over two on each of the term or we simply to say on both sides, then you can see that you will have the equation like this and this one will become a center form circle then what you need to do is to base from the standard form of circle, which is this one, to get all the information. For example, the center and the radius of the circle. Now, we go on. 
So after you have known these three samples, then you can also see that we have to bring to the general form. So once you make a general form, so I can just give you a very, very quick example from the from the example three. For example, now you can see that when we talk about the part A, okay, so you can see the part A. Now you can see the part A gives you the equation as x minus 4 all square plus y plus 3 all square equals to 36. So this is the standard form because when you have the standard form, you can easily take you can easily see the center and the radius. But sometimes for calculation, we don't want to have bracket square, so we have to expand it. So when we expand it, so we just follow what you you have learned before. For example, you just use the identity to expand this one. For example, you have this, and then this one, and this. So you can see that when we expand the things here, so you have the simple equation. And then now, we have to rearrange the equation just like we do for quadratic equation. But this time, because you have both square term, which is x square and y square, so we will always write x square term first, and then write the y square. That means that we should always write all the square term, no matter x or y. And then you follow the order to write x term in the y term, for example, like this. And then what you need to do is that you have to rearrange all the constant term, which is just only the numbers on the left. That means that this time the 36 should be subtracted to the left to become minus 11, and then equal to 0. So we will call this one what becomes the general form of the circle. It's just like what we have do we have done in quadratic equation or even in equation straight line. That means that what the what the general form means, you put all the terms on the left hand side and leave a very critical number zero, zero on the right. So we call it general form. But why and why and, and when we have to use the general form? So you can see the book will also say that oh the general form is something like this. So why do we have to load the general form like this one or you can see in the book here because the general form you can see a very important thing is that when we talk about the general form you can see that the general form the first two terms would be x squared and y squared and we will say that in general you can see that the x squared term and the plus y squared term both should be positive one as the coefficient so this is very special for circle because when we talk about quadratic equation or quadratic function, quadratic equations, the leading coefficient may not be one. But in general form of the circle, we always want to write one to represent the general form circle. Because actually you understand that from the distant formula, we start from x minus x square and y minus k square. There should be no co no other coefficient in front of x and y. So here also when you expand it, you should have the positive one here. So you can see the note will also say. A very important thing is that the right side is zero, it's just normal for the general form. And also B is say the coefficients of both x square and y square are equal to one. So B is careful. And also see this one not very important because you will not see this one frequency, but just a very just a just a just a special note here will say that there's no x y term. That means that after you have expanded something with square from the distant formula, you still don't have x times right term because easy to see each of the bracket square has only one variable and a number so we can never multiply as two variables in the term now after this then you can also see some example for example convert the equation this one in the general form so this one is very easy because you can see that you just do expansion just like before but do remember is that instead of changing the standard form into the general form we may sometimes ask you to change from general form to the standard form but do remember is that this one actually you've learned before because from square term you go back to something bracket square it's just the concept of completing square so if you still remember what you learn in completing square it should be something like this. So I have to write better here. Yeah. So this one is the complete completing square. But do be careful is that this completing square would not only doing on x but also doing on y. 
that means that if I really do this one coming square so what we need to do is just you separate for the x square and x and the y square and 6y then for the complete square we should always put the constant term to the right hand side because we have to reverse the process of the general form so what we need to do is that now we have to do for the first two by adding over 2 all square so this is the standard, standard way to do from mean square and also for y square you do this also that means that actually for the equation of circle coming square it's just like you do twice to get in a step and then for the right side you fill up what you have added for both x and y for example you add the 4 over 2 all square and then the second one would be 6 over 2 all square and then you continue to do so after you continue you should have this one because you can use it this one you becomes equals to one and then these two term would be one and two like this so do remember is that the reverse process is actually the complete square not very important so you have to make practice anyway okay so after this example you can also see that from general form we have some equations that means that this is actually the result from the complete square so i think that you may just you may memorize this formula but this formula will be sometimes useful if you don't want to write many steps but i will not explain very very deeply about this one now the uh, so this one is an example so just rebalance that and also this one but just remember once again is that even the general form it may be a trap for example you can see here i give you the linear coefficient is not two for both x square and y square um it's not one for x square and y square but you can see it's two so actually this one is a trap because as we say the circle equation should not have the linear coefficient other than one so if you have the coefficient r than one it means that it should be multiplied by some number else for example it's multiplied by two so you have to make sure that okay make sure that you should have the x square and y square and no other coefficient in front of x square and y square that means that even you can see there is a fraction here you still need to change because we have to base from this equation to get the center and the radius equation okay so after this then now we go to see some other example here so this example you may just read yourself and then the last two part would be cause the uh, the last part of this session is called the nature of the circle so the nature of circle actually is just some three three special names about circle but i think that this one is not very important in dsc but no matter whether the dsc will ask you or not just remember i think that this 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 column is not very useful so please cross it out so why do we have something is called the nature of circle because when we have an equation in general form or in another form for example in standard form sometimes i may give you a fake is that this is not actually comes from distant formula so we can just take example to see what is going on but before i uh, going on you have to understand those names which is called the real circle sorry i should change it to the pen here so you can see this real circle point circle and imaginary circle so how do we distinguish about these three so we take a look for example now you can see that for the seven eight now you can see we we have already have the center form by divided by four but you can see that after you have divided by four you can see this general form is a little bit strange because you can see on the right side it is not a real number so because it's not real number you can never have this one as r square it never can be because it's a negative number so any real number square should be a positive number of zero but here you can see the negative number it means that it is just like a fake equation very like a equation of circle but it's not really representing the circle in the quantum plane because we cannot represent it and furthermore you can see that this one is something square at something square so square itself should be at least zero so at least zero thing plus at least zero thing cannot be negative that means that this one actually cannot represent anything so we will call this one if I really like a circle but it should be a fake circle then the, the formal name we call imaginary circle
And then for the part B, now this one you can see the radius is zero. That means that when you do this one, finally you may have the equation something like this. For example, you have x minus minus two all square plus y plus one all square equals to zero. So this one you can verify by yourself. But you can also see once again this number is a fake because I keep don't give you a positive number. I give a zero, but you can never say zero is 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 the radius. So this one is not represent circle, but Please be careful is that this equation actually represents something. Does represent something. Don't think that okay, it is not a circle, but it is not a valid equation mm -hmm. in coordinate plane. But this one, even it is not representing a circle, but still there would be one pair of coordinates which satisfy this one. It's simply the center, obviously. The original center itself. That means that this one actually representing a point, and this point is just like the original center. So why do we call this one? You if we go back to the book to see this one is called point circle, P O I N T, because actually this one is really representing a point, and this point should be like the original center of the circle even this there's no circle here but you have the fixed point before so actually this point is actually representing the center original the center of the circle so just 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 remember because this one is not very remember but but just brings you that sometimes equation can fake you something okay and the last concept which is called the position of the point relative to the circle so this kind of example, why when we will ask you is that sometimes we will also ask you to see whether the point it should be lines in circle, line inside circle, line outside circle, or on the circle. That means that when we want to learn this session, you have to learn these three important preposition inside, and then you have the other one outside, and then you have the last one is called on the circle. So the difference between these three is just very easy so in order to talk about these three so what we need to do is just we i will show you a circle here for example there's a circle then what we need to do is that now first of all you should have the point in the in between the circle actually we say this one is the center is the center then now the next is that now we have to mark some points outside for example this one so this one is usually called outside and then ah uh, ah uh, so sorry I think that I should use the same color as I mark here. First of all, inside. For example, inside, we call this one is called the inside. And surely that after you have inside, then you may have some. This one is called outside. And the last one is that if you have a point exactly on the circumference, so we call on the circle. So I think this picture is very easy to see. But how do we say the point are inside, outside, and on the circle? So actually, it's just like you are playing some computer games or mobile game talking about the radar diagram. Radar diagram. What does it mean? It just means that now if I say inside circle, you should have the distance between the point and the center should be shorter than what? Shorter than the circle distance so the circle distance is what is just actually the radius so you can easily see that if i want to compare whether the point is inside outside of the circle so what you need to do is just you check the distance for example we say this one is d and the relation between the radius so you can easily see that when we say inside d should be less than radius and surely that for outside d should be greater than the radius and the last one is that if I say on the circle, so we say that the d, the distance, should be exactly equal to the radius. So this is what we need to learn and we need to distinguish when we talk about the 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 what the 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 the, the position of relative to the circle. Now so you can see that it's just very easy. So you can see what we need to do is just you have to remember that when we want to do this question, first of all, extract the center first. That means that we have to get the center of the circle. Well, for example, when you say this one, you should first of all to get the center first. That means that you have to ask yourself what is the center. So after you have got the center by using no matter formula or coming square, 
then you use this center and the points given for example this one to make the distance by using the distance formula so you can see this formula comes here so what you need to do is that ah not this one it should not be this one it should not be this one it should be this one okay using this formula or using all the other values so what we need to do the last is that you have to compare the distance and the radius you have got from the formula to see whether you have the relation of what so the what relation will give you the position of the of the, of the point so once again remember outside should be greater than radius inside should be less than radius and on the circle is extended on the radius so you can see that after we have learned these kind of basic concepts then actually you can try to do some classwork to call, to verify whether you really understand what you should learn in chapter 7.1 so before i end this program so i would like to bring you some classwork for class 5a and class 5e students but if you are not the 5a or 5e students you may you, you may also take a try to do the classwork so please remember to the classwork on the paper or no matter you you use a new a book to do and now i said i've selected some questions from the exercise 7a so i expect all of you should take a try even okay you may not understand all but try to see whether you can do that so if you can do them i think that you should understand most of the concept in chapter 7 or 1 and the question would be 10 14 18 21 22 23 24 29 so please keep in mind the due date of this one so i will send to you later so try to see if you have any problem so once again if you have any problem ask your subject teacher or you may whatsapp to me okay so stay tuned and next time i will go through deeply about chapter 712 thank you and goodbye